causing the earthquakes. There might still be water under the crust of the earth trapped. As some of the water escaped during the hydroplate theory idea, the, the plate would settle down, trapping water under there. There are still huge areas of trapped water. Did you know there are underwater, at the bottom of the ocean, underwater thermal vents? There's hot water squirting up from the bottom of the ocean. Well, duh, where is it coming from? Doesn't it have to come from down lower than that? There's still water in the crust of the earth, trapped down there. The ocean crust is pretty thin, about three to five miles thick. Continental crust is about 30 miles thick. Any earth science teacher can tell you that. That's been pretty well determined from, you know, reading the S&P waves when earthquakes uh, take place. The earth is cracked up, I understand, and it's got a bunch of plates are moving around, and they're still moving a little bit. Pensacola has zero chance of an earthquake, according to this map. Some places have a real good chance of an earthquake. The cracks have been found, and they're still active, still moving. <clears throat> the earth would be like a big water balloon. It would be floating, flexing up and down. Now, we're talking just a few miles on an 8,000-mile earth. A few miles of movement is close to zero in scale here. The water would run off, causing enormous erosion canyons. Just south of uh, Houston, Texas, they had a flood several years ago in New Braunfield, Texas. The water went roaring over as, the, as it flooded and overflowed its dam and caused incredible erosion. If you fly out west and just look at some of the erosion patterns, it's, patterns, it's unbelievable how much erosion this planet has had. You see the three gossips here, the rock spires sticking up out of the ground, or the penguins, or go see the... Uh, uh, Arches National Park in Utah or Bryce Canyon. You see these rocks sticking straight up out of the ground. They'll tell you it takes millions of years to erode all this stuff. Yes, boys and girls, millions of years of erosion. I don't think so. That's in my backyard. There's my ink pen on top of it. Had a pile of dirt out there, got rained on one time, and it made erosion marks. Here's millions of years of erosion along a highway built a few months ago. There's millions of years of erosion. No, I don't think so. I think that's my glasses sitting right there. Erosion can take place quickly. There's uh, obviously great erosion marks in Washington and Idaho from the Missoula flood. There was an ice dam. I believe this would happen after the f real flood of Noah's time, maybe a few hundred years later. Ice caps are melting back, but a big bunch of water got trapped, all of a sudden released itself, <laughs> shot down to Portland, Oregon, did incredible erosion. Along the way, there's a waterfall, one of the largest waterfalls in the world, called Dry Falls, Washington. But there's no water going over this waterfall. Totally dry. But when it was flowing, it was probably bigger than all the waterfalls in the world put together. You can study about Dry Falls, Washington, if you want to read more on that. It's also interesting to notice, nearly all the mountain ranges in the world follow the coastlines. As Walt Brown mentioned in his hydroplate theory, that's probably because they formed at the same time as the result of the same event. The mountains arose, the valleys sank down. The flood in Texas, the Guadalupe River flooded, had 30 inches of rain in one week. Water overflowed the spillway and did an unbelievable damage to that area around, you know, this city when the, when the dam overflowed. It carved a canyon a mile long, 50 feet deep, and hundreds of yards wide through solid limestone rock. Guadalupe River residents rebuilding after flood losses. Interesting. 70 feet deep in some places. Now keep in mind, it carved this through solid rock. One flood, little bitty flood, 30.